So in this video, I would like to talk about a certain champ I've been playing recently and been enjoying for most of my time. That champion being Ryze, the ADC of AP control mages pretty much. Now at the moment, he seems like a strong champion by himself, but when being compared with other champions in the meta, he feels more like on the weaker side of things. But the thing is, with Ryze's track record back in the past, it's kind of surprising to see him actually behind everyone else rather than ahead. You see, way back when they still played Dota 2 consistently, League was still kind of like a meme in which it was always the worst game of our superior MOBA Dota 2. But eventually it got to a point where I at least wanted to try the game before I gave any comment on how bad it was in case anyone called me out on it. So I loaded up the game with a friend I used to play Dota with all the time and still do at some points and duo together in the bot lane. Of course, however, not a lot of the things that we learned in Dota obviously transferred over to League and especially when it came to champion selection. For example, you ever heard of a Shyvana ADC and Ash support? Well, you did now. Anyways, when we didn't do that duo bot, I played Rise support while my friend played Ash ADC, keeping in mind we didn't really know what ADC was or what was right for the bot lane. I never even knew he was a mid laner to begin with. I just saw his kid and it was like, oh, he has a root. Well, he kind of put his ass in the support role and just kicks some ass in some bot lane. Whoa! Well, the point is, even when I was support, I was just kind of felt a little bit too strong when I played them, even though I had no items to buy because I also didn't have an income item. Don't ask why, it was just always a situation where I won the lane and ended up winning us the game eventually. Now I don't remember what season I played in particularly, probably season 5 or so I think. I'm definitely sure though that was Rise the second rework where he had an ult that amplifies all those other abilities. Or his third, you know, either one. Now with all that in mind, the champion himself feels like a fun champion back then, but it wasn't for the same reason that I find him enjoyable now. You see, the old Rise wasn't challenging fun, but more look how stupid OP is kind of fun. You know, the fact that he can dominate every game without really knowing the game itself at all was just one champion because it seems kind of stupid to me. And that, and that put that mindset in that game was just too easy in other words. Fast forward about three years and now you have Rise today where he suddenly is not the super strong pick that he always is. The first thing that probably stands out for me with Ryze is probably his early game damage. Now most of the time when you want to trade with your enemy laner, you usually use your combo W, E, then Q. But that combo itself takes about 100 dairy mana to cast, so it's only really used for all ends really, because otherwise you go out of mana really fast without even realizing it. And when you actually do the combo, it only takes off about 100 to 150 health, which is alright at first, but taking into consideration your not so big mana pool to actually spam it, and the fact that you might need to use the same spells to farm the lane instead, which is what you should be doing most of the time, there's not really much you can do as far as poking goes unless it's an accident with the creep wave. Which leads into the next point where you have a hard time against all the poke champions. Sure, he has trouble with these champions to begin with, as he should, but with the new rules being implemented, it gets even worse to a point where even lanes before are now even next to possibility unless you play it right. Lastly is the importance of stacking mana that puts him behind the other laners. Now remember back in Season 7 when Ezreal was a champion that was absolute shit tier pick of the ADC list? And nothing was changed about whatsoever. Now, do you remember why he was so bad as an ADC that he was actually moved to the jungle to make him viable? It's that one little item that they both have in common with their build called tier. Now the problem with tier is not that it's bad, it's just... Well, actually yeah, it's just bad. The fact that tier gives no stat benefit other than 250 mana, which you can get the same stat with mana crystal for just 350 gold versus 750 gold you'd be spending, that's a 400 gold difference that you'd be spending on just the stacking factor, which will pay off when it's done, but until then it's a waste of gold that can be used for getting your rod to ages faster, for example. But if you want to skip tier entirely in order to get rod to ages faster, you're also delaying your item power spike to you get when you get Sarah's embrace complete. Not only that, but the active shield that it gives could also be missed, which could mean life or death in some situations. With all that said, the new meta is centered around the end of the game around 20 to 25 minute mark, which gives you only a limited amount of time to really use the power spike to actually do something with it, which is around the 20 minute mark. So if you're behind, you're fucked. But with the bad things that come with Ryze, there's also a lot of good things that come with the champion It's probably more important than anything. And it's how fun it is to play him. For instance, remember that how to play gen where he did the speed gen build? Well, Ryze is like that only at every stage of the goddamn game. <laughs> it's so easy to proc your movement speed buff in lane, and with the phase rush keystone, you will go much faster and longer with it. Along with the shield it gives, it will help you win trades even if they are not in your favor. I mean, look at this. Look at this. LOOK AT THIS! This is stupid! I shouldn't be able to do this! Anivia. Anivia! Anivia! Please! Punish me! I'm missing so much! Please do something! 
GG's. Another thing about him is how high of a skill cap he has when it comes to playing it. Now, no matter how many times you play him, there's always something to learn about him. Something you can improve on, a new technique you can use, a new strat you can adapt to. Anything that can help you, really. Even the best mid laners like Faker can master him. That's because of how good and complex Rise's kick can be. As you may know, triggering the spell flux with another spell on the enemy does different effects. And with those different effects comes a whole variety of combos they can use in different situations. Now, let's give an example. So let's say that one game I'm playing in top lane against Garen. Well, since you have a range advantage and the only mobile thing in this kit is his Q, it's pretty reliable to hit him with your classic WEQ combo trade, you usually would do. But let's now say that I'm up against a really mobile champion like Katarina or Ezreal mid. Suddenly the combo gets really hard to hit because all they have to do is E away before the Q hits them. At that point, it's a one trade for them because the w they wasted next to nothing to dodge your skills while you wasted 130 mana to only get a little bit of tick off health off them. But what you can use instead is use E, W, then Q, and so it leaves you with either them getting away and you using only 40 mana instead, or you get them for 2 seconds and makes the Q more reliable to hit so you won't lose a trade. It's the little things like that that make the difference in the lane, and that goes along with farming where you know where you have to hit your E onto which minion, team fighting where you just can't use the same combo over and over again, and instead you have to maybe switch to more AoE oriented mage to do more damage to the entire team rather than just one person at a time. There's always a case by case basis when it comes to Ryze, and playing him more and more makes the game more and more interesting by the second. And let's not forget the elephant in the room, the one and only Ryze ult. Now, as for me, I don't really use it as a way to reposition myself to do as much damage as possible or a way to set up my team to get the team wipe, at least not that much. But what I do use it to do is play mind games with the enemy. And now let me explain it. So let's say you were walking back to your tower from your base because of, well, whatever reason, and then several people show up to seize your tower. You feel like there's not enough time to save it before the rest of your team comes, so all you have to really do is just all right in front of it, and then problem solved. The reason why is because seeing it will either make them panic and run away from the tower or throw everything that they have right before the portal is complete. It's an easy win-win, using them for practical reasons for losers anyways. <laughs> uh. All in all, a champion that used to be top tier pick has now gone sour with the new runes in place. But maybe being a top tier pick isn't so bad after all really, because that's what the game is about after all, having fun with your favorite champions. Even though it took them 4 reworks to get it right, they still got it right at the end. And I'm fully enjoying the way you play him. Anyways, thank you for taking time to listen to my little discussion tonight to say, but if there's something that you agree or disagree with or just want to leave a comment on, just leave a comment down below with your thoughts. But thank you all for watching, and stay sharp.